Hello everyone. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. You are listening to the Live to 110 podcast. My name is Wendy Myers and you can find me on my website live to 110.com and you can find this video podcast on the corresponding blog post on the site or on YouTube on my YouTube channel Wendy Live to 110. Today we are going to be talking to Robert Craven who is the CEO of Innate Response Supplements. They're an amazing line of organic food-based supplements that I take myself and that I give to all of my clients that I recommend to my clients um, because they are one of the only brands around that are food-based and organic. Uh, there's a lot of food-based supplements out there, but for some reason they don't use organic uh, ingredients, which I find strange because it's obviously very expensive. Um, but I think that Innate Response supplements are one of the best lines of food-based supplements that I've encountered and that's why I use them myself. So we're going to be talking about uh, this line of supplements and um, some problems in the supplement industry. So keep in mind that this program is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Please consult your healthcare practitioner before engaging in any treatment that we suggest on the show today. Um, I want to wish all of you guys a Merry Christmas uh, and a Happy Holidays. I know all of you guys are with your family, and I thank you for you know taking time out on your holiday to listen to this podcast. Hopefully, you're catching up on all the podcasts uh, that you haven't been able to listen to, and you're busy working. Now that you're taking a break, you can catch up. <laughs> um, but I again, I want to thank all of you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful time, wonderful relaxing time, getting lots of sleep, resting those adrenal glands. And um, my, you know, heartfelt thanks to you guys for listening. I just really love doing this podcast and um, disseminating all this information, kind of the latest cutting edge info on how to approach your health and how to heal your health conditions naturally. It's really uh, just a joy to do it. And I just really, truly thank you for listening. So for you guys that are interested in my infrared saunas, you guys hear me talk a lot about the be benefits of near infrared saunas. Uh, they are amazing to kill parasites and fungus and candida and chronic infections in the body and heal the body, help it recover, um, detox, heavy metals and chemicals. There are so many benefits proven in hundreds of studies. Um, so I've uh, designed my own Live to 110 sauna. It's a four bulb near infrared sauna and they're on sale right now. They're on sale for $299 so about $50 off uh, the normal price. So I like to run little you know, special for Christmas, little annual sauna sale. So if you guys are interested, go grab one of those. The sale is going to be over January 1st. So definitely uh, go on the website on the store and grab one of those while, you, while supplies last and while the sale lasts. And for many of you, you guys are stuffing your face right now, eating all kinds of bad food, all kinds of sugar and gluten. I know you're guilty of it. So come the new year. I hope some of you guys are going to be focusing more on your health, cleaning up your eating habits, trying to you know get healthy, maybe lose some weight, tackle any chronic health conditions you have. And my Mineral Power Program is a great way to do that. Um, it's an amazing program that I've developed over many, many years to heal the body naturally, to just give the body what it needs nutritionally, and to detox the body of heavy metals and chemicals that are interfering in your body's function. And it's a program that I've used to heal my health and that I strongly encourage you to learn a little bit more about it and see if it's a good program for you. You can learn more about it on mineralpower.com. I have lots of podcasts, lots of information on mineralpower.com to help you learn about the program and I encourage you to look at it. So now for the podcast today. Um, Robert Craven is the passionate CEO of Food State. Um, this is a company that's been mastering the art of farm fresh supplements since 1973. Robert entered the, national, uh, the natural industry as CEO of Garden of Life 10 years ago. Many of you are very much familiar with Garden of Life supplements, very high-end supplements as well. Today, his company Food State has two great brands of supplements, including Innate Response and Megafood. And they are one of the only companies that buys 100% pesticide and herbicide-free fruits and vegetables directly from U.S. farmers for use in their products. So uh, Robert is here with us today on the podcast. I'm very excited to have him on. Thank you for coming on the show, Robert. Robert, thank you so much for coming on the show. Great to be here, Wendy. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about your story and how you came to head a supplement company? 
Sure. I'm, um, I'm pretty blessed to run a pretty cool company. And uh, the path I took to get here was uh, truly winding and, and it all kind of led to where I'm at today. I started off with Procter & Gamble and sales leadership training, you know, carrying a bag, setting store shelves, calling on grocery stores, you know, right out of college. Uh, and then I would spend some time at Boston Scientific, which is a medical device company, learn how the healthcare system works. Um, you know, kind of the back end of hospitals and purchasing and insurance and that kind of stuff, which was great. Um, all kind of leading to health. Uh, and then I worked for an, a, a strategy company. I was doing best practice benchmarking and learned how the Global 2000, you know, the best of the Global 2000 really run their businesses. Uh, but it was very boring because you would do strategy work and you do all this benchmarking and they'd say, hey, we'll work that right into our five year plan. Uh, and so on the side, I was helping entrepreneurs in the West Palm Beach area just write business plans. And I just did it instead of playing golf, I was just having fun, you know, helping entrepreneurs write business plans. And one of the entrepreneurs I met was a guy named Jordan Rubin. And Jordan Rubin is the founder of Garden of Life, um, a whole food supplement company. Uh, and this was almost 15 years ago, or over 15 years ago now. And uh, I helped Jordan. He was running a little company called Garden of Life out of his home. And I, wrote, I helped him write a three year uh, business plan. Uh, and I just wave at him at church and we just kind of stayed sort of friends. You know, we weren't tight or anything, but I helped him over the course of a few months write his business plan. And Three years later, he called me and said, okay, that's done. We hit all the objectives. Now what? And uh, he was young enough, and I was young enough. I said, just hire me as your CEO, and he did, and uh, we built a great company. Uh, we had a lot of fun building Garden of Life uh, in the early 2000s, and um, I fell in love with this industry. I fell in love with the natural industry and, and whole food supplements, and I've been here ever since. I, I actually worked with another guy named Jethro Phillips, who's a real pioneer in healthy fats. Uh, he was the founder of Spectrum Oils. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Jethrin and I started a company that um, bought and sold organic ingredients for manufacturers. So we would buy from the farmers from all over the world and then sell to the, uh, sell to the um, uh, manufacturers, you know, great manufacturers making the organic product. So I learned the whole food side of the industry. Uh, and then a few years ago when uh, they called me up to run, um, uh, the name of our company is Food State, and we have two brands, N8 and Megafood. And we're talking about an eight today, but when they called me to run that company uh, a few years ago, uh, I was ecstatic because I knew the, the history of the company and, and how they poured into it and they actually buy from farmers. And so I was able to mesh all of that, you know, uh, uh, incredible sales and marketing for Procter & Gamble and knowing the healthcare space from Boston Scientific and best practice business stuff and then buying from farmers and my experience with Garden of Life. And it, it all kind of culminated uh, right where we are today. So long and winding road, but uh, I love what I do. And it's been a really special time in this industry. Yeah, it's interesting that Garden of Life and your company, Nate Response, are one of the only organic uh, food-based companies that there is. There's not that many organic food-based supplement companies. Correct. Yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult to do, I imagine. Absolutely. I think um, you know we are the only company I know of that actually buys from farmers. We'll buy a half a million pounds of organic produce this year. Um, and, and now we're starting to tell the story of those farmers in a deep way. You know, Uncle Matt's Organic is where we get all of our citrus and um, Stalbush Farms out of uh, Stalbush Island Farms out of Oregon. They're the first certified sustainable farm. And so we're buying our beets from them, about to buy some other, uh, other produce from them. Uh, and I love, that's part of my job that I love. I get to go out on the farms and, and meet the families and, and hear their history. Um, it's fantastic. But then we actually literally bring those in our back door uh, we're the only company I know of this as well that makes our own ingredients. So we make ingredients out of the produce. We make our own tablets. We put them in our own bottles and we ship them out. So uh, completely vertically integrated all the way back to the farm. Yeah, and that's it's so rare. I mean, that's why there's, uh, you know, I've been looking at food-based supplements for a long time. And I think just recently, um, organic food-based supplements have come on the market because I guess the technology just wasn't there. Right. Um, even a few years ago, I, I imagine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? About um, you know why there's uh, why it's so difficult to uh, you know have a food based supplement company and have it also be organic. Well, yeah, I mean the whole food. Um, uh, well, let's back way up, right? I mean uh, the bulk of all supplements made uh, and sold, you know, ninety plus percent of everything. You know, the ones you buy in CVS and Costco and the big buckets of vitamins, um, they're all made in a lab. Um, so they're all made uh, to be kind of uh, to try to mimic that isolate isolate um, like a vitamin C. You know, vitamin C is made out of sugar and alcohol, uh, ascorbic acid, and they're trying to mimic the vitamin C isolate from an orange. And an orange has like forty thousand different cofactors, and they're they're finding more every single day. So what man has tried to do over the last probably sixty years, on the, from a vitamin standpoint, is isolate and bring it down to the smallest component. Um, that they feel that man feels is effective 
Uh, and a lot of times it's been shown through science to be effective. I mean, there's lots of science behind specific isolates. Um, and, but instead of staying natural and true to the food, man, in, in our infinite wisdom, has decided to kind of boil this down and try to make it as small and as cheap as possible. Um, so 90 plus percent of the vitamins out there, probably 95 plus percent, are really made in lab, uh, and, and people don't actually know it, but some of these supplements are made from things like petroleum, uh, you know, things that aren't all that you know healthy, but you're you're mimicking that nutrient, right? So uh, back in 1973, uh, our company was founded, and we started you know really trying to get more towards whole food, and we were really the pioneer from a whole food standpoint. Um, back in the late 90s, uh, other companies like Garden of Life and New Chapter uh, started kind of coming onto the scene. And uh, and really uh, doing it their way, and then the three of us are really are the main companies that have kind of grown up in the whole food space since about 2000, really 1999 and 2000. Um, and now it's uh, the fastest growing sector in the vitamin space. People are starting to really understand uh, taking my vitamins through food is really you know we like to say we like to stay close to the intention of food, and uh, the true intention of food isn't just for nourishment. I mean, you're, it's about energy and it's about how your body's assimilating these things and and, and how they get it. Uh, and so we believe that in a deep way. And while our three companies are very different, uh, I would say those are the three companies that are kind of out on the front lines of, of whole food supplementation. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why it's preferable to take food-based supplements? Well, it's logical, right? I mean, I think that if you think about an orange, and, and there's lots of science actually behind, I could send you a quick list of all the scientific articles written that has compared food versus an isolate. Uh, you know, so if you get your vitamin C, straight up ascorbic acid versus you, you get your vitamin C in an orange uh, or if you get your folate in the broccoli, right, with the broccoli delivering that. Um, you know, there's lots of sci science that says that food is more effective. Uh, the problem right now with our food supply and our food system is the food that we're eating today is doesn't look a whole lot like the food of the 1960s. Uh, you know, over over spraying, uh, very hard to get organic soil, even with organic soil, you know, the nutrient, con you know, the soil health is nowhere near what it used to be. Um, you know, we don't buy local anymore. Uh, a lot of what we're buying is processed, um, you know, packaged foods, uh, lots of sugar, lots of refined flour. I don't have to tell you this. You know all about it. Um, I think that the the quality of our food that we're getting today isn't isn't very good uh, yeah. in general. And it, and even if you do have a farmer's market next door, it's still hard to get all the nutrients you need. Um, so first, you need you need supplements. I mean, it's just very difficult to get all the nutrients that our body needs to be nourished because the food supply is just not all that great. Um, and so when you think about it, how do you want to deliver your nourishment? Um, and you know, there's one way which would be to take an isolate, multi. A multi is basically 40 different isolates. Okay, uh, a good multi might have 40 different isolates, or you could take an isolated D or an isolated B. Um, and what we believe is that it's, it's more powerful to uh, take your nutrition in the form of food. Uh, so in some cases we we deliver just straight food. Uh, in other cases we'll take that isolate and we'll put it back into the food. So for example, you know a good high quality ascorbic acid, which you know we want a certain dosage of. People have come to expect a certain dosage. We put that back into the whole orange. So you get all the forty thousand cofactors that go with that vitamin C, and that's really the difference between a typical vitamin and what you would be delivering in whole food. Uh, and we believe that the body logically recognizes that. I mean, you're going to just logically recognize that food and the nutrition and all the components of it and that your body's not just looking for the isolate. And that's why a lot of isolates just kind of mm -hmm. go right through you. Everybody's experienced that before uh, yeah. where you take a vitamin and it kind of just, you know, you, you know that it's gone through you. Uh, and that's normal. I mean, because your body's just not picking it up. Um, and that's why you have to mega dose, right? You have to get, a, you have to take a lot of it so that your body gets some of it. Yeah. Uh, so that does, that's the people that I know that take whole food supplements. That's what they would say is the main reason that they, they appreciate it. Um, also it's a premium uh, product and if you're going to pay that much for a premium product, you should be able to feel it. And so everybody that takes our multi or our vitamins, I ask them, I'm like, do you feel it? And, uh, nine times out of 10, they say, I feel it when I forget it. Yeah. Like if I go on a trip for two or three days, yeah. you know, then I start to feel it. Um, it's kind of like watching your kids grow. If you see them every day, uh, but you go away for a month, you come back and you see them grow, right? So um, uh, it, I, you should be able to feel your vitamins. And if you're not feeling your vitamins, then it's probably your body's not recognizing it. Yeah, and it's also good. I think uh, recently there, the advances in technology of creating the food-based supplements have made it so that you can concentrate the formulas more. Because in the past, it seemed like you would have to take so many pills to get the recommended dosages that you need. But is that also because 
people need to take less of a food state nutrient? Um, it depends, right? I mean, I think it has to do with your diet and your lifestyle. So, you know, we always recommend, um, um, you know, if someone's trying to uh, affect a certain outcome, and, you know, versus just overall health and wellness, you know, kind of more of a foundational approach versus more of a allopathic if you're trying to affect a certain outcome. You should certainly do that with a naturopath or a doctor, you know, integrative MD that can kind of monitor your levels and make sure that you're getting what you need out of the, out of the supplement. Um, so it just depends. I think that if someone's eating a healthy lifestyle and you're taking your nutrition, you're going to feel more energy and you're going to feel that, that, that nutrition is getting into your, your system. Um, and if you're trying to affect a certain outcome, uh, you know, I work with a naturopath. I work with doctors all the time who are tracking my levels. Um, you know, for example, I'll give you an example of my dad. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here on vacation with my dad and, uh, you know, his, his iron was low. I mean, it was, it was very low. So we shipped him off some of our uh, our blood builder product, and and uh, he went back, and you know it's all good. So getting getting that that testing is vitally important uh, to to understand where you're at, or if it's just a general health and wellness nutritional approach, you should absolutely be able to feel it, you know, and the, the nutrition you should feel that the extra energy that comes from having the proper nutrition. Yeah, well, it seems like that now the food based supplements today they're more concentrated because I think in the past. Um, it was really hard to design supplement programs for people because there was less compliance because you had to take so many of a, a pill. Like for right. a multivitamin, you'd have to take eight of them a day. Uh, but now it seems like there are pills are more concentrated. Yeah, and and also powders are 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 big now. Um, you know the, the as you know the the boom in boosters. I'm sorry, uh, uh, smoothies. Uh, you know, everybody's putting kale in their smoothie, and I mean, there's a big boom. Everybody's juicing. I mean, I, I know I've got lots of friends now who are starting to juice and and do smoothies. Uh, you know, so we're seeing a lot more demand for powders. You know, so that you can get uh, that food with the concentration levels needed, and then you're adding it to the levels that you need. You know, for your body and your own your own situation. Um, so we make uh, you know, just to answer your question more specifically in terms of the dosages, we make three different types of, of food state nutrients. We call them. I mean, uh, we make 36 ingredients basically, and we call them food state nutrients. Uh, one classification is just food. Um, you know, so cranberries, just cranberries. Uh, we have a cranberry blueberry blend, um, and um, we've got several just food type blends. Um, then we've got a second category of ingredients where we actually infuse a high quality isolate into the food. Uh, and we infuse it back into the food so that you're getting all the cofactors, but you're also getting a dosage that the science might say is effective. Yeah. Um, and then the last category is uh, of uh, uh, vitamins that we make are really our minerals. So things like zinc uh, and calcium, we deliver that on uh, a uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, you know, yeast matrix. And you know, yeast is, is been used in the body forever, uh, and the body really recognizes it and takes it up as food. Uh, and so we infuse that yeast. We get that yeast to basically eat the mineral because uh, your body doesn't really assimilate minerals very well. So by infusing it with the yeast, your body will take up more of it and recognize the minerals. So those are the three types that we that we create. Um, and then you use the different dosages depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And how did you? How did? How long did it take to conceive the idea of innate response and you know bring the the company's product line to fruition? Well, uh, many, many years ago, I think we're up to about uh, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, our VP of R&D, Richard LaFond, uh, actually crafted what we now call the slow food process. And he did it with the University of New Hampshire. Uh, and at the time, I think we launched with uh, high 20s, like 26 or 28 ingredients, uh, where they worked with the University of New Hampshire to uh, master the art of this infusion, you know, infusing, infusing the isolate into the food or infusing that mineral into the, to the yeast, for example. Uh, and so they worked for two or three years on mastering the method of creating our own vitamins and minerals uh, and our food state nutrients. Um, and then, you know, we, we launched Innate Response, oh, probably 10 years ago now, uh, eight, 10 years ago, as a way to give practitioners in particular a, an alternative. Um, you know, the, the Innate Response line is really aimed at practitioners that are overseeing patient health. Uh, and you know, and um, and helping the patient to manage uh, towards a certain outcome. Um, you know, we're known in, in practitioner channels as kind of more connected. Uh, you know, connected to the farmer, connected to the earth, connected to the supplement and the nutrition that you're taking because of the food. Uh, and then we provide a, a number of different uh, educational materials uh, to help the practitioner 
educate their consumer on not only how to use supplements, but how to think about health and wellness in a general way. Um, you know, uh, supplements are part of the answer. Uh, a lot more of the answer is lifestyle and what you choose to eat and, and how you treat your body and sleep and rest and mental. Uh, you know, you can be the you can eat everything healthy, but if you you've got something on your mind, and you're stressed out, it'll still damage your body. Uh, and we recognize that and want to help our practitioners. Um, um, you know, spread that uh, knowledge to their patients. Well, that's where innate calm response comes in, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a great product. I love that product. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. Well, so why don't you tell us a little bit about some cutting ed- edge advances in uh, food-based su- supplementation and technology? Um, like, so what are what are some of the, the things that you're doing today to even improve upon what you're doing in your company? Um, we are working on, uh, wow, what can I share with you? We've got some really cool <laughs> new products coming out. I want to make sure that I, I share with you uh, what I can. Um, we just uh, uh, launched a line of inflammation products um, you know, with turmeric. Turmeric and curcumin, you know, curcumin is kind of the extract from turmeric. There is uh, stacks and stacks of science on curcumin. I mean, this, the, the benefits of curcumin uh, is through the roof, and we're also big believers in the whole form of that or turmeric. So we've got several new products that, um, uh, well, we've got one particular new product that we just launched around turmeric and, and curcumin from an inflammation standpoint. Um, and uh, we've got some more coming uh, in the next quarter or so uh, around that, you know, because inflammation is big. Everybody's walking around with, like, low-grade inflammation. Uh, and so, you know, whether you feel it or not, uh, based on what you're eating and the nutrition you're putting in your body, you're probably walking around with low-grade inflammation. And our partnership with Dr. Andrew Weil uh, he's a big proponent of the an- anti-inflammatory diet, uh, and so we ascribe to that and try to educate around that as well. Uh, in addition to offering up the the turmeric and the curcumin, um, and so that's a big that's one of the big things that we've done. And we're in the process right now of um, I don't think this is secret. We're in the process right now. Actually, I, I put yeah, it on Twitter. Yeah, tell us your secret. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on Twitter. So I mean, the day the day I think I already messed up because. I was in our I was in our factory. I was in our plant when uh, we were running a test batch of turmeric. So we were making our own turmeric, food state turmeric. So it'll be another ingredient that we're we're producing, uh, and we're about to announce a big partnership with a uh, a, a farmer uh, that's supplying us turmeric. Um, and so that's exciting for us. I mean, if I can walk in the plant and actually see it and smell it, uh, and we run it down the dryer, our dryer technology is very unique, uh, and to be able to see that and be at the end of the dryer and taste it and have it taste like turmeric and smell like turmeric. Um, that's the key to our process is that dryer, the dryer technology, um, not only infusing, infusing um, the nutrients and binding them to food, uh, but how we dry the nutrients down the dryer is also very critical to our process. Um, and then we have a whole part of the slow food process, which is how we tablet. We tablet very slow, very low heat. Um, you know, our, our tablet presses are from 1950. Uh, so as we, they go really slow, I mean, really, really slow. Uh, and we want it slow because speed means heat. Uh, and we want to keep the heat away from the food. We want to keep air away from the food, moisture and heat. Uh, and that's why we use amber glass bottles, uh, because we want to make sure that we're, we're keeping the, the light and the heat, sorry, no, it's okay. uh, away, <laughs> away from, uh, away from our product. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's very interesting. Um, you know, yeah, you guys get everything right. You get everything right because there's so many food-based supplements. You go in there in a plastic clear bottle, or there's just always something wrong. And it just you guys are you know, or it's not organic or or whatnot. So you guys are. I just really commend you guys. You're getting everything right. We we uh, you know we have a set of core values, and and one is do it right. Um, and you know it's a simple one. The other one's think like an owner. So we try to think not only like an owner of our company, but kind of the owner of the planet. You know, we want to make sure that we we really honor the planet. Um, and we're a small company. And, and for example, I know a, a lot of product a lot of product companies put their bottles in a box. Um, you know, for the marketing. You know, and and that's all well and good. But I mean, we're a small company. We're a smaller company. If we were to do that, we would be producing sixteen dumpster fulls of boxes a day. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're a small company. So for us, little things like that, you know, not using a box for our bottles, um, you know, staying in amber glass, which is more recyclable. Uh, actually, glass is a lot more recyclable than the plastic, um, and it protects our product. But we like to do the little things right, and it's very unique because we're vertically integrated. Uh, most companies are not. Um, Ninety plus percent of the brands uh, in our industry, except for the bigger guys, I mean, uh, are um, contract manufacturing all their product. So you know they're picking up the phone and calling someone else who's making their product, and they're shipping it to them, and then they ship it to the you know to the uh, to the doctor or to the retailer or whoever it might be. Um, 
versus we go all the way back. I mean, you can come to New Hampshire and tour our plant. I'd love to have you up. And you can actually see us making the ingredients. You can see us blending and batching all the formulas and putting them into tablets and the slow presses and then running it down the bottle line and, and then our whole shipping facility. It's all right there in New Hampshire. And, um, um, you know, we love being in New Hampshire. And the fact that our company has been there for 41 years is something we're very, very proud of. I love that you have live webcams in your factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we believe that we believe in trusting relationships and part of that means transparency. I mean if the more transparent you are, the easier it is to build trust and, and have good relationships with people. So uh, a few years ago we installed live cams. Uh, and what's really funny is if you go to most uh, facilities, any manufacturing facility really on the planet, uh, they make you check your cameras at the door, and there's signs everywhere that says no pictures allowed. Uh, so we encourage pictures. We just want you to like tag us when you tweet it or put it on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and that keeps our quality at a very high level, right? Because, I mean, our operational people know they're being watched. No one's um, dipping their finger in the turmeric. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they're also very proud of what they do. I mean, uh, I think we like to show off what they do because our, our uh, employees, we call them the family, but our family members are, uh, are very proud. It's very artisan what we do. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of handcrafting and love and attention that goes into our, our product, and, and we're very proud of it. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy to do. I mean, I was reading on your website, you've recently bought $3 million worth of equipment, and it's just not easy to uh, source this product from start to finish and test it for, uh, you know, the, uh, the correct amounts in each tablet. And do you also test for heavy metals, by any chance? We test for everything. Uh, in fact, uh, we just bought a new machine, it's called an HPLC, uh, and it's a, it's, a, um, it's a machine that's got an argon flame uh, that's hotter than the surface of the sun. Uh, and so to test for minerals, you have to burn it. Uh, that's where fireworks come from. So, you know, when the color of the mineral is what gets, you know, you spit it through the flame, and that's what tells you the purity of the mineral. Uh, so we just upgraded our, our machine uh, most recently, and, uh, and the team loves it because now instead of parts per million, we can go to parts per billion on our minerals. So we have a full lab in-house, uh, which is also very unique. Uh, and so we test everything coming in and everything going out. I mean, there's a couple of tests we have to send out for, uh, but by and large, uh, we test pretty much everything. All the botanicals. Uh, you'd be you'd be surprised how many times people try to cut a botanical. Uh, you know, so if you get in a botanical like an herb, uh, for example, people will mix it with something else. It still smells like the herb, and looks like the herb, and tastes like the herb. Uh, but if you don't test it, you can't see the purity. So we test every herb that comes in. Uh, we test uh, our powders and ingredients throughout the process. We test our tablets. Uh, and then we test our finished goods uh, before they go into the final product. Um, so we're very, very confident that what it says on the label is what's in our pill. It's what's in the bottle. Um, and that's on live cam too. So <laughs> you could go and watch that on live cams because we actually show our lab on live cam. Um, and uh, it's fun. I mean, it's, 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 it's a pleasure to work for a company where everybody takes such pride in what they do and, and, they're, and they're willing to show it off and, uh, and be very, very transparent with what we're up to. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's what I just love about your company that you're just uh, you're just on the cutting edge of technology and producing the highest quality supplements. And there's not that many people doing what you're doing. It's because it's very expensive and very difficult, and uh, uses you know proprietary technologies. Well, it's funny you say cutting edge because uh, you know to a large degree we 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 talk about our mission being we're in the business of improving lives by staying true to the intention of food. And when you think about being true to the intention of food. Uh, it's all about kind of going backwards, right? It's it's less about isolating. It's less about all that, uh, but it's about going backwards and capturing what's really in the food and maintaining as much of that as possible. So uh, the fact that I never thought about it as cutting edge, but you're absolutely right. The technology it takes to kind of minimize the harm to the food, um, all that technology is pretty cutting edge uh, in order to get it back to the start and and put food in a convenient form. Um, that your body recognizes and can assimilate. Um, so yeah, it's it's neat to think about that way. But our goal is to kind of go backwards, right? Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to take it back to back to the start, back to the future. Exactly. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the supplement industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the problems with uh, other food-based supplement companies and what they're doing and what they're producing? Well, there's a, a couple of definitions here, and I would never ever talk about another company, but I do want to make sure that we're there's some different strata. Okay. Um, so, for example, Centrum, uh, I don't know if they still have it on the market, but Centrum had a food-based you know, uh, product out there. Um, there's a real difference, and, and let, me, um, 
Let me first start off with definitions. There's a food in, in our space we call a there's a segment of our uh, space we call food based, and then there's another segment that we call whole food supplement. So um, we are in the kind of the whole food supplement space, and the major difference there is that we're actually integrating nutrients back into the food. Uh, we actually do a separate step that that has a certain technology uh, that utilizes a certain you know technology to get the isolate or to get the mineral or to get that nutrition back into the food. Okay, uh, food based uh, where we you know in our our circles is really a company that takes an isolate and then a food powder and mixes it together and puts it in a tablet. So there's no effort to get the you know the isolate of the mineral the nutrient back into the food. You see what I mean? It's just really they mix it up with the food powder. So that's one thing uh, that's a little bit of the difference. Um, the other difference is how you get your food powder. Um, you know, there's uh, very large companies. I mean, very large. There's one in Illinois that I've toured before, and I know good people there. Great company. Um, and that what they specialize in is drying food. So if you've ever seen Kellogg's with the dried strawberries, you know, the freeze-dried strawberries, they do that. Um, but they they dry all kinds of food powders, and 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 they you know buy from farmers, and they buy you know and they dry food powders. Um, the most common type of, of, of dryer that they use is called a spray dryer. And the spray dryer takes a, you take the food down to a, as liquid as you can get it, um, and then you spray it through a very tight nozzle that goes past these you know, very high heat flames. Uh, and you do that in a chamber uh, that's got the right humidity so that when you do that at the top of the chamber and you spray this little tiny nozzle, you know, sprays this really fine mist, it turns into powder on the way down. Okay. But that, that, that process is very harsh. It's very, very harsh on the food, uh, and it doesn't maintain the smell or the color or the taste, really, of the food that, that begins with it. Um, so, and that's why we use a window refractance dryer. And the window refractance dryer is um, a 50-foot, basically, dryer bed that, that dries, the te- dries the food powder very gently. Um, and so you know, it goes over 50 feet very, very slow and low heat. And by the end, it starts off as a liquid or more like, um, uh, more like a slurry. So you're getting more of the food, and at the end, it comes off like a flake. It comes off like a flake or a fruit roll-up, a little drier than a fruit roll-up. Uh, but it, it doesn't overburn. It doesn't overcook. Uh, it never really cooks. It just We're just evaporating that water very gently out of the, the food powder. So at the end, you can taste it. You can actually taste it and smell it and see the color um, that doesn't get preserved in the spray-drying technique. So the vast majority of the food powders out there are spray-dried or drum-dried, which even burns the food even more. Um, and just to, just to give you some sense of the cost, uh, a, a typical bag of whole food powder might cost $10 a kilo, you know, mm-hmm. the kind of spray dried. Um, it costs us about $18 a kilo just to run our dryer. That doesn't include the, the, the food on the belt. So it's probably double, if not more, uh, when you get to, down to it in terms of the, the difference in price uh, just to get to the food powder. So very, very different, unique technologies out there. Uh, around food based uh, and how food based supplements are created. Is that helpful or too much? Uh, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm very, very interested in this. And I'm sure the listeners are too, because I think people, even myself, I take a lot of supplements and have for many, many years, always reading labels, and you don't really know how it's made. I That's mean, exactly it's, right. it's uh, not so easy to find this information or truthful information uh, about how supplements are made and produced and the differences and nuances, et cetera. Well, it's a perfect point, Wendy, because, I mean, in the industry, uh, I've done a couple of speeches, and, and one of my speeches is called Big T Transparency. And, you know, I'm, I hate um, bad players in the supplement industry because nine times out of ten, if there's an article in USA Today, it's going to be a negative article on supplements. It's going to be a negative yeah. article on science, the science behind the supplements. And, and it, it's definitely not talking about both sides of this equation at all. But that's paid, um, for, that's paid for by Big Pharma. Well, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I know you can't go into that. <laughs> yeah, but it's and then you know I hate it when I, you hear the radio ads where, where these people are just making you know obscene claims about supplements and 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 then they make their money and they pay their fine and they start another company you know um, and it, that's really a very small percentage of our market you know uh, it's a few ha- a handful of bad monkeys right that's making the whole barrel look bad um, and so I'm I'm big on transparency because I think the more that we tell the more we show on how we do it. Um, the more other companies show and tell on how they do it, uh, especially good good companies in the in the supplement space, I think we'll build a gap between us and the bad players. We have to build that gap. Uh, we have to help consumers see that there's a better standard, a higher standard, and they should be looking for that standard. So asking where the product comes from, you know, where the produce comes from, how are you making it, show me this stuff, 
Um, I think that if consumers will do that more, not just with us, but with every company, uh, we'll elevate the standard and, and, and hopefully create more distance between the good players in the supplement space and the bad. Yeah, and so you talk about these articles that are published about how supplements aren't effective or, or whatnot. And, you know, these are coming from studies where they're isolating a nutrient, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, or vitamin D. You typically, all, almost always, synthetic nutrients. Correct. And do you, are, do you know of any studies on the horizon or if there will be any studies about uh, companies using food-based, uh, you know, sort of studies using food-based nutrients to produce health? Sure. I mean, there's a couple of small studies. I mean, the real difference here is economics, um, if you think about it, because most of the whole food supplement companies are uh, are a fraction of the size. I mean, a fraction of the size of large pharma companies or even large supplement companies. Um, so we're, we're very proud, and this is news. I'm not sure that you know, but we were just bought. Our company was just bought by a company called Pharmavite, and Pharmavite is a very large supplement company in the mass channel. Um, they're number one in mass. Uh, they're actually very good at what they do, uh, high, high quality in that side of it. They've got resources on science, uh, for science and, and studies and nutrition um, that they're going to bring to bear for us. Uh, they want us to stay right where we are in the channels we are, doing what we do, and they want to help us do that at a higher level. So to be purchased by Pharmavite is actually a huge boon for us uh, because they want us to, they're keeping us as a wholly owned sub, meaning my team stays in place. Um, they don't want to cross channels. They don't want us going into mass. Um, you know, they don't want to come into our channel. Uh, but they've got a lot of experience with studies, and, and they've got a lot more resources than we do to be able to help us. Um, you know, take that to the next level. So I'm giddy today. I mean, this was just announced a few days ago. Oh wow! Because I think it's going to help us take it to the next level in terms of studies. But it's economics. I mean, we to do a great double-blind placebo-controlled study can cost a quarter of a million dollars. So when you think about applying that amount of money. Uh, and oh, by the way, you can't say anything about the study. So as soon as you get the results of the study, you can't put it on a bottle because now you're making a drug claim and, and that's against our, our regulations, uh, DSHEA, Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act. So we can't even say anything from the study. So it's one of those things where they don't make it really easy for us to want to go out and, and, and do the studies, yeah. um, but I want to. And it's all about bioavailability. I think that the, the, the main thing that people think about uh, logically when they think about a whole food supplement is bioavailability. My body's going to recognize it more. It's going to take more in. Um, and you can feel that, right? I mean, you, you, I, I, we have a money-back guarantee. If you take a 30-day supply of our multi or whatever and you don't feel it, you can get your money back. I mean, you should be able to feel your multi. Um, and so for us, there's, there's some intrinsic evidence, you know, some uh, qualitative evidence, you know, and experiential evidence. Uh, but I can't wait to get some real evidence uh, and and really go ne go go a little deeper on the on the science side of things. Yeah, me too. There needs to be a, a lot more studies like on food food state nutrients, whole totally food agree. nutrients. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's well, economics. It's a, a yeah. lot of economics. Yeah. Yeah. Same with a lot of natural natural health treatments, so to speak. There's not a lot of quality studies on them because there's no one to pay for that. <laughs> no one's. Well, it's funny. Sure. I talk to people all the time. They're like, "Well, maybe it's all in my head, but I feel great." And I'm like. Does it really matter then? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not suggesting that it's all in your head, but I mean, if you feel it, if you feel it, and it makes you, it gives you more energy, and it and it and it affects your life in in a positive way, um, you know, that's that's the bulk of the equation. Uh, and we want more. We I absolutely want more uh, studies and and to have access to that. We've got some studies teed up for this year that I'm very excited about. Um, and, uh, you know, the other thing to mention here is most whole food supplements are a lot easier on your system. Um, you know, most people can't take an isolated, uh, vitamin on an empty stomach yeah. and you can, you can certainly take our product on an empty, empty stomach. So there's that intrinsic evidence as well, um, that your body's recognizing it. It's not rejecting it. It's not saying, whoa, this is a mega dose of something. Um, so there's, there's more intrinsic evidence cause you should be able to take our supplements, any, you know, our, our whole food based supplements on an empty stomach and not not feel the ill effects. Yeah, that is concerning when you take, in the past, I've taken a multivitamin, you get nauseated for a couple hours afterwards if you take well, it on sure. an empty stomach. So that's well, what I know, like about your products. I can take them and not have any problem like that. But you, you know, when you take that isolated supplement, you know, you're not real sure how it's made, right? I mean, well, how is it, what's in it? Um, you know, what was used to make that? Uh, and so we like to tell the story of our farmer because it's, it makes it very, um, clear you know this is where we got the beets and this is where we got the carrots and the carrots are in there and um, that's that's the fun part about you know working for this company well robert thank you so much for everything that you're doing and 
uh, providing health to the masses, uh, hopefully more masses now with your buyout. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's very exciting. I mean, we're, we're they, they really want to keep us separate. They, they see this as their entry into a, a new channel, you know, innovative channel. Um, and uh, I feel like they're going to bring some amazing resources to bear to help us tell the story uh, and also, uh, you know, prove the story as well. I mean, you know, people believe because they can feel it. Uh, but I'm with you. You know, I, I I can't wait to apply a little bit more resources to make sure that we can, um, you know, show it as well. You know, I mean, from a study standpoint. Well, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit more about kind of what you have on the horizon or any other plans you have for the company? We are big on education, uh, so we're you know we're a big believer that uh, you know our mission is improving lives. And if you think about that as the top of the stool, uh, and there's three legs of the stool. Uh, the first leg is product. Uh, so, you know, a, a, pro- a good product can help change a life, but a product alone doesn't do it, right? We've all taken a product and it doesn't change your life alone. Um, the second leg of the, of the stool is education. And again, you know, education alone doesn't necessarily do it. We've all read a book and applied it for two weeks and then kind of, you know, dropped off. Uh, but the third leg of the stool that we think is most important is community. So everything we do is all about delivering a product with education that helps build community. And whether it's a retailer community or your community with a podcast or whether it's a community from a doctor, you know, who's trying to affect their community. Um, we like to partner with folks like Dr. Andrew Weil, Dr. Trinity Lodog. We've got other doctors and other thought leaders um, that we want to bring to bear on the education side. Uh, and then we do everything we can to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to apply that education in a community setting. Um, you know, we, we do, um, uh, you know, events in a box where we send you everything you need, posters, sign-up sheets, you know, if you're a retailer or a doctor or whoever it might be. So it's not just about product. Uh, and we've got some great products on the horizon. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to um, uh, innovating even more. Uh, this time next year, we'll probably have about 42 uh, food state nutrients. So we're at 36 now. So we've got some new nutrients in, the, in, in process that we're very, very excited about. Um, and that my VP of brand would kill me if I told you because I, <laughs> I tend to I tend to tell the secret. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, so we're excited about that. But to us, it's not just about product because if we're if we're really in the business of improving lives, it's got to be more than just product, uh, and and it's got to be more than just education. So we're, we're also very big on community and and trying to build the trust and relationships that it takes to build that. Mm-hmm. Well, Robert, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was really informative. It was my pleasure. It's really good to meet you finally, and uh, and good luck with everything. Thank you so much. And listeners, if you want to learn all about detoxification and my version of paleo, the modern paleo diet, you can go to liveto110.com, sign up for the newsletter, get look at all the free information and podcasts on my website. And if you like the podcast, please give it a review and rating in iTunes. I'd appreciate that so much. And thank you for listening to the Live to 110 podcast. Deanna, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Wendy. It's such a pleasure. Well, why don't you tell us, you know, a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to do the Detox Summit. It was very ambitious. Well, um, my if I look at my nutritional background and where I, I have been in terms of my research and what I have studied, a lot has really focused on detox. So for 10 years of my life, I was working on product formulations, working in a clinic on functional medicine approaches to detox. I was part of a clinical trial looking at women with fibromyalgia and detox regimens. I worked with Dr. Jeffrey Bland, who is really, I would say, the father of detox in many ways, especially nutritional detox. So I had the pleasure of working with him and and really getting steeped in that information. And uh, just even now, I'm faculty for the Institute for Functional Medicine teaching on detox. So I feel like I've always been in the detox arena, but maybe I haven't always called it that. But it is this piece of really coming to terms with our environment, um, what we're eating, making sure it's clean. And it's, it, it really, I'm starting to see detox in layers now where it's really going beyond food. Because I've just seen that clinically that that happens. When we change our food, so many things change around us. So um, I think that the way that I've started to approach detox has changed over the years. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah. So do you, uh, so you hosted the detox summit this year and you had, you know, over 30 different experts and right. so much expertise and knowledge. And I really enjoyed many of the sessions. So are you planning to do another summit next year in the similar vein? I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. You know, I, I was noodling on what kind of summit to put on. And I was thinking, I had a lot of different ideas But what I kept coming back to was that nobody had really focused on detox in a broad brush way. And I had even talked with Dr. Bland and some of my colleagues and 
you know, they said this information needs to get out there. It may not be very popular in certain circles, but it's gaining in popularity and we need to bring forth good, credible information. And I think, Wendy, that you know, even with your own detox program and your focus on detox, that there's a lot of credibility issues around the word detox. You know, what does that mean exactly? Let's set the record straight. So in the detox summit, I had people doing, um, talking about nutritional biochemistry, really opening up with Dr. Mark Hyman, Dr. Bland, Dr. Younger, and, um, and Dr. Perlmutter. So having like, this grounded scientific basis of detoxification. And we even t talked about labs. I had Dr. Kara Fitzgerald, uh, Dr. Aristo uh, Vojdani, who is great in terms of detailing us on labs for toxicity as well as autoimmunity. So it was good to have that basis because many people don't know what it means to be toxic. And then from there we went into talking about emotional toxins, talking about spiritual toxins. You know, who's ever heard of spiritual toxins? It